بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله وكفى وصلاة وسلاما على عبده المصطفى نبينا محمد وآله وصحبه ومن اقتفى أثره واستنى بسنته إلى يوم الدين أما بعد إن شاء الله تعالى in this limited series we'll be talking about one of the stories of one of the greatest prophets of Allah عز وجل the scholars they agree that the prophets and the messengers of Allah are not all in one rank rather their ranks are multi- multiplied and that they have different and varying uh, levels. And the highest of the messengers of Allah Azza wa Jal are five that Allah Azza wa Jal has mentioned as Ulul Azmi min al-Rusul, the ones who had the highest commitment, the ones that had the highest commitment. And inshallah, in this series, we want to talk about just one of them, and that is the story of Nabiullah. Musa alayhi salam. Some scholars they say, كَادَ الْقُرْآنُ أَنْ يَكُونَ لِمُوسَى That due to the many repetitions of his name in the Qur'an, it's almost like the entire Qur'an uh, almost became about Musa alayhi salam. So Allah Azza wa Jal, he mentions about Musa, his early struggles. And he mentions about Musa, his struggles with Fir'aun. And he mentions Musa, Musa and the struggles and the tribulation that he had with his people, the children of Israel. So for that reason, inshallah, we'll be taking a short glimpse into the story of Nabiullah Musa. But before we start with his entire story, it's important to give a background to the time that Nabiullah Musa alayhi salam lived in. And Allah Azza wa Jal gives, gives us a short synopsis of the uh, the history uh, that existed before Musa was born. So Allah Azza wa Jal, He says in the Quran, in Surah Al-Qasas, إِنَّ فِرْعَوْنَ عَلَى فِي الْأَرْضِ وَجَعَلَ أَهْلَهَا شِيَعًا يَسْتَضْعِفُ طَائِفَةً مِّنْهُمْ يُذَبِّحُ أَبْنَاءَهُمْ وَيَسْتَحِي نِسَاءَهُمْ إِنَّهُ كَانَ مِنَ الْمُفْسِدِينَ So Allah Azza wa Jal, He says, Fir'aun, who is the nemesis of Musa, who's the biggest enemy of this Prophet of Allah Azza wa Jal, and an enemy of Allah Azza wa Jal. Allah Azza wa Jal, he mentions that Fir'aun ala fil ardi, that he had taken power in the land. And that he made the people of Misr, which is the location, Egypt, that he was ruling over, that he made its people Shia'an into different uh, classes, into different classes. يَسْتَضْعِفُ طَائِفَةً مِّنْهُمْ And he made a certain group, a minority, that is transgressed against them. So Allah Azza wa Jal mentions the crimes he does to this certain minority, and this minority is the children of Banu Israel. So Allah Azza wa Jal, he says, يُدَبِّحُ أَبْنَاءَهُمْ He was slaughtering their sons. وَيَسْتَحِيِّ نِسَاءَهُمْ And he would... Let their daughters remain alive. إِنَّهُ كَانَ مِنَ الْمُفْسِدِينَ That he was one who caused corruption in the earth. So Allah Azza wa Jal, he tells us the exact action that Fir'aun was doing. But why was Fir'aun doing this evil action of killing children? The scholars of history, they mention that Fir'aun saw in a dream that a huge fire has started from Beitul Maqdis, Jerusalem, and it came and destroyed every single house in Masr, in Egypt, except for the houses of Banu Israel. So for that reason, he called his fortune tellers and magicians to explain this dream and to see what's the meaning behind this dream. So they came together and they said that there will be a man from the children of Israel, from the children of Nabiullah Ya'qub, who had settled in Egypt that will overtake your throne and that will destroy this empire and this uh, kingdom that you have. So for that reason, he commanded every single year that all the boys be killed. All the young newborns 
that were male be killed and that the daughters be left behind. But this became hard. Uh, so they continued doing this mass genocide every single year, but it became hard on them because they had no one to tend to their fields and farms as they had taken the children of Israel as slaves. So since they needed a workforce, they came and complained to Fir'aun. And they agreed that this action, this annual murder should be, uh, should be delayed. One year, kill them. And the other year, leave them alone. Leave them alone. So Allah Azza wa Jal, He continues with the uh, priest story of Nabiullah Musa. And He says, وَنُرِيدُ أَنَّ عَلَى الَّذِينَ استضعفوا. And we want to grant favor to those who were weakened في الأرض and the earth. وَنَجْعَلُهُمْ أَئِمَّهُ وَنَجْعَلَهُمْ أَئِمَّهُ And that we make them into leaders. وَنَجْعَلُهُمُ الْوَارِثِينَ And that we make them the inheritors of this, uh, of this earth. So Allah Azza wa Jal here, He makes a divine rule and He says, that any time that there's a group of people that, is, that are being transgressed against, that Allah Azza wa Jal gives them victory. Allah Azza wa Jal always grants victory to the one that is being transgressed. And Allah Azza wa Jal, He does not help the one who is a transgressor. So we learn from this that we should never, if we're given authority or power, we should never misuse our power or should we transgress against anyone. As the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told his virtuous companion Mu'ad ibn Jabal, he told him, اتقي دعوة المظلوم Fear the supplication of the one who has been transgressed against فإنه ليس بينها وبين الله حجاب For between it and Allah Azza wa Jal, there is no veil that stops it. And this is the first part, the prehistory of the story of Nabiullah Musa Alayhi salam.